Welcome back to the SMART TV studio. As you can see, I've made that quick transition from the expo uh, back into our TV studio. I'm joined now by Emma from Prino Ricard and Kamal from Kantar. Lovely that you're here. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for um, having us. Lovely to have you guys here. So um, we were just talking a little bit off camera that your presentation yesterday um, was a success. You were talking about micro moments and how to effectively target Chinese travelers. Can you tell me a little bit more about what, that, uh, about what your presentation was about? Sure. Well, look, our presentation started because we realized early on that we needed to really redefine our digital strategy. And we wanted to build that strategy based on insight around how travelers approach their trip mm -hmm. and the type of um, research that they do before they even leave their house. Because what mm -hmm. we have found that, um, you know, about 40% about of people actually make active decisions before they go on their trip. So it was really important for us to understand where our brands fit within mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was basically kind of identifying when to target them, where to target them, what to say them, and how to say them, mm -hmm. so that we could lay the foundations of the digital strategy that Perno Record can use to target these travelers. Fantastic. And I think from my experience, it was kind of uh, quite a breakthrough methodology which was used mm -hmm. because it was about integrating different ways of reaching out to the travelers and kind of understanding them, bringing that all together to really understand how to embed a strategy which is within the traveler's pre-trip you know, pre journey. Mm -hmm. And so, can I ask, you talk a lot about the micro moments of the pre-trip planning. How did you identify which micro moments were the most important? Yeah, so as I said yesterday also while presenting, you know, from a traveler's perspective, shopping is not the main agenda that they have. From their perspective, pre-trip planning is all about booking, researching excursions, etc. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when brands try and reach out to them, from a traveler's perspective, it's a disturbance. And mm -hmm. hence, it was quite important to identify micro moments when they were open to receiving brand-led communication. Mm -hmm. So we did. We started by doing a lot of digital, uh, digital webnography to understand understand what sort of micro moments really exist in the traveler's journey, then took them to a survey to identify the size of those different micro moments, mm -hmm. and then also looked at the anxieties that travelers had in those micro moments to really understand their openness to receiving information. Mm -hmm. And can you give us an example of what one of those pre-trip micro moments sure. would be? Yeah, yeah, so actually the most important and relevant one for us is the shopping micro moments. So we did find that approximately two weeks before people leave, they start mm -hmm. really actively searching for shopping. Okay. And that can be down to shopping at duty free, it can be shopping at their destination. Mm -hmm. So that was obviously a very apt moment for us to be able to put duty free on the radar and the specific offers that were happening in store at the time of their departure and mm -hmm. when they got to their destination. And we, we had an interview yesterday with, um, with Microsoft who talked a little bit about perception messaging, knowing kind of what message to give at what time. I presume that there's nuances between, that, as you say, that two week period before flying versus the time that they actually booked the flight. Are you able to tell us a little bit how that differs? Exactly, so it differs quite a lot. You know, When people are at the booking stage, they're looking for a lot of promotions that happen at, uh, you know, on the, for, flying or for boarding arrangements. Mm -hmm. And therefore, at that time, if brands are also trying to talk about their promotions, it's not going to resonate. So we said that's the moment where brands just need to build awareness. However, when it comes to, let's say, the shopping micro moment, that's the stage where you actually talk to them about the benefits of duty-free shopping. You talk to them about uh, you know, building their familiarity with, uh, with, with the sort of uh, allowance that they have for alcohol, etc. Mm -hmm. So we were able to identify the right message to be given at the different micro moments, which aligned with their information needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. And there was a line that stood out to me in your paper, which was Chinese travelers look for that label of made in the USA or made in France more so than made in China. How did you come across this finding and what has it meant for you guys at Perno Ricard? So I have worked for four years in China, a lot with Chinese consumers. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you know, you know when, by working in China is that for them, made abroad is really critical. So in 2008, there was a big scandal that happened, which was around the baby milk powder, mm -hmm. wherein they found that the baby milk powders were actually mixed with melamine, crushed. Okay. It led to a lot of health issues in young babies. It led to a lot of uh, uh, you know, negative sentiment around products made in China. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, alongside that, a lot of other things have also happened, which I believe have eroded Chinese travelers' trust in the products made in China. And therefore, there is this, there's always this aspiration or need to buy products which are more authentic, and they're always seeking for quality. Mm -hmm. Also combined with that is you know, their aspiration to demonstrate the success they've had in their lives by being able to afford products mm -hmm. made abroad. Mm -hmm. So these two kind of findings exactly. were quite deep rooted in our understanding of you know, how we need to target Chinese travelers. Great, and so how has that impacted what you guys do at Pernod Yeah, so it's had a very big impact. So first of all, from a, um, as I said, a digital strategy, we now have, rather than just doing digital around specific activations, we have a well taught through digital strategy, mm -hmm. um, which is really deeply rooted in traveler insight. Um, and then for every brief that we do now, it's very much micro moment focused because you know really that, that was a key finding out of the work that we needed to think micro moment. Mm -hmm. um, so now we have great debates amongst the teams on which micro moments they want to target mm -hmm. and that goes right at the center of the brief. So that's from a, where we find people and when. But then also the how, so the actual communication. Yeah. So the messaging now that we're creating, it's not just pure brand messaging, so it's really been tweaked mm -hmm. to be appropriate at the different micro moments. At the different you know, moments. And the results we showed yesterday are fantastic. We've seen you know, massive triple digit increase in, um, in click through rates, in mm -hmm. redemption rates. So our business is very happy and we're really starting to see the benefits of this great work that we did with Cantor. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. This has been really, I hope I get the chance to see you later on in the event because I'd love to talk about this more. Thank um, you. And I hope you've enjoyed the, the experience of presenting here. Is it your first Congress? It is my first one. Mine yeah. as well. It's a yeah. dream come true to be here and presenting and you know, connecting with so many people. Oh, I'm glad. Well, as yeah. I say, thank you so much. It's been lovely having you. Um, and I hope I get to chat to you more. Our pleasure. And we'll be right thank back you. with Neda in the studio in just a sec. Thank you.